Magandang hapon? Ah, sabi niya, maganda ka pa sa hapon. Right? So, uh, paki, paki bati po ang bawat isa. I'm happy to see you. Okay? So, makang hindi yata kayo seryoso. Sabi niyo, I'm happy to see you. Okay? With enthusiasm. Alright? And, um, <clears throat> siguro, kaya kayo hindi masyado masaya, nagpa-practice na kayo para sa Holy Week. No? Kasi minsan, pag Holy Week, dapat uh, ang mga mukha natin ay eh, malungkot na. No? But actually, Holy Week should not be a, a day wherein we are sad or gloomy, but it is a, a, a day or a celebration uh, of victory. Kasi nga po, alam po natin that Jesus, uh, though we celebrate Holy Week, Jesus is, is alive. He is not actually dead. But we celebrate yung kanyang pagmamahal sa atin, doon sa kanyang pagkamatay sa Cruz, dahil po para sa ating kaligtasan. No? So, and um, I'm excited uh, that we will be able to Again, commemorate again kung ano po yung ginawa ng Diyos sa atin. And so today, we'll continue on the series, Truth Matters. At ito po yung series natin sa Gospel of Acts. And let me just ask you this question. Do you know of a person whom you think is unlikely to become a born-again Christian? Okay? Meron po ba kayong mga kilala tao na sa tingin hindi yan maboborn again? You know? If you know of a person, uh, why do you think that this person would not, is unlikely to become a Christian. Bakit? Uh, was it because, is it because that this person was so evil na hindi na mababorn again? No? Uh, ibig sabihin, yung sukdula na sa kasalanan? Or, maybe that person you think will not be able to born again because uh, that person was so deep already, is too deep in his or her religion. Ibig sabihin, sarado, kandado, itinapon na po yung susi. No? Hindi na mabubuksan. And, and so, we think that those people, either they are evil or they are so uh, deep in their own religion or don't believe na parang hindi na sila maliligtas. Or maybe, some of you have lost hope already on people that you are praying for. Sino sa inyo may pinagpipray na maging Christian? yung mga mga tao no so meron kayong pinagpipray na tao na maging Christian taas ang kamay if you are praying okay i am also still praying for someone to become a christian and sometimes we we lose hope kasi ang tagal-tagal na we keep on praying but still god seems not answering our prayers hindi pa rin sila nagiging christian but today i hope that you will see hope no the passage that we have will give us hope that god is still transforming people's lives saving people's lives or maybe some of you are here still thinking if you can if you are if you can find god maybe some of you lost hope that up to now you have not experienced the love of god that's why you're here you're probably here because you're seeking you want to experience god in a personal way whether you are praying for another person or you are that person let me tell you that the passage that we'll be looking at today will give you hope and um, we'll be looking at the story of Paul, no? or Saul, who later on will become known as Paul. Ang ating pong, uh, title po ngayon is Experience God's Transformation. Can we repeat that? Experience God's Transformation. So we'll look at the story of Saul uh, and how the Lord has transformed him how the Lord has saved him. And so what we can see here is the theme of this, the whole chapter 9 of Acts is this. People experience transformation through God's sovereign grace. It is through God's sovereign grace that we are saved, through God's sovereign grace that we are transformed. When we talk about sovereign grace, we talk about the sovereignty of God. Ibig sabihin po that God is all-powerful that God is in control, that God cannot be stopped with what He is doing. Yun lamang po ang ibig sabihin. So, ibig sabihin, kung ang ating Panginoon ay makapangyarihan, at hindi lamang po yun, no? He's not only sovereign, but He is gracious, which means He gives us His grace. Pag sinabing grace, things that we do not deserve. And so, He gives us salvation that we are not worth receiving. But God, in, again, because of His love, He graciously gives us yung tinatawag na salvation. No? And so, as we look at the life of Paul, of course, we know Paul now as someone 
who's an apostle, a great encouragement to us, who have written 13 uh, books in the New Testament, and that's the Paul that we knew. But when we look at the Gospel of Acts, we first saw Paul in chapter 7. In chapter 7, nakita po natin uh, the story of Stephen, that Stephen was the first martyr. He was stoned to death, hindi ba? And ito po yung sinabi sa Acts 7.58, it says, When they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him, and the witnesses laid aside their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. So ibig sabihin, it was Saul who gave the permission. He gave the go signal for the people to, to stone Stephen. And he was the one who approved it. No? At siya rin po ang nag, kumbaga, nag-declare that Stephen was dead. No? And then in chapter 8, makita po natin, it says there, But Saul began ravaging the church, entering house after house, and dragging off men and women. He would put them in prison. The words ravaging, it means that Paul was indeed doing damage to the church. He was destroying the church. No? He was persecuting the church and the persecution was so intense that the, the believers decided to scatter. Di ba? Ang sabi doon sa chapter 8, last Sunday you talk about that, that they scattered. But sometimes when we look at that word scatter, we think that that scattering was because of defeat. Na natalo sila, that's why they scattered. But as we look at that story in chapter 8, the scattering was not a picture of defeat, but it was a picture of victory. Because as a result of the persecution, ano po nangyari? They spread and they started proclaiming the gospel to wherever they go. And as a result, church are being planted in those areas. And so, yung kanilang scattering was not a, a, a scattering of defeat, but it was victorious. Because the, the gospel of God is being proclaimed. And so, as we go to chapter 9... The first beginning verses, we can see yung description ke Paul. Ang sabi dito, Now Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogue at Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way, both men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Yung word na breathing, no? Uh, that statement, breathing threats to uh, threats and murder. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Pag sinabi humihinga ka, when you are breathing, which means you are living, right? You, you are alive, which means ang, ang, ang pinapakita po dito was that Paul was uh, uh, made it a purpose and a goal in his life to persecute the church. No? Ginawa niyang life Life goal niya ang pagpe-persecute sa church. At sabi po dito, hindi po siya na contento. He, he asked for uh, a letter of authority so that he can chase the Christians all over so that they can bring back to Jerusalem and put them in prison. Ganun po ay yung tinatawag na intensity po ni Paul in persecuting uh, the believers. So tumatakbo na nga po, ibig sabihin umaalis na yung mga believers and Paul was chasing after them. And he said he is looking for those people who belong to the way. Yung, yung belonging to the way, the Christians were called to be people of the way. Probably referring to uh, the statement of Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that's why it says, uh, belonging to the way. And so, who was Paul? As, bakit po ganun siya rin kagalit sa mga Christians, no? And we all know that, that, uh, that, that Saul, rather, was named Paul la uh, later on in chapter 13 of, um, of Acts. Um, it is common po for people to have two names during their time. And, and Saul has another name, which is Paul. But he doesn't want to be known as Saul anymore because he wants to show the transformation that happened in his life. That's why he wanted to be called Paul. No? And uh, what we can see here is, is that um, even before he became an apostle, what was his background? What was the background of Paul? Ang sabi po, in his testimony in chapter 22.3, ang sabi po ni Paul, Ni Saul, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, 
but brought up in this city, educated under Gamaliel, strictly according to the law of our fathers, being zealous for God, just as you all are today. Ibig sabihin siya po ay Hudyo na ipinanganak sa Tarsus. Ang tawag po sa kanya ay Hellenistic Jew. No? Ano po yung Hellenistic Jew? Anyone that is born outside of Israel, even though if you are pure Jew, you are called Hellenistic Jew. Para pong ito, meron po ba kayong mga Pilipino na ipinanganak sa ibang bansa? Di ba? Halimbawa po sa United States, meron po tayong mga mga uh, pinanganak na Pilipino, Pilipino ang nanay, Pilipino ang tatay, pero ipinanganak sa United States. And what do you uh, notice about those people who were born in another country? For example, yung mga Pilipino ipinanganak pinanganak sa sa US. Ano po ang mga mapapansin nyo? Maaring sabihin nyo na sila ay Pilipino, pero iba na yung kanilang kultura. I- minsan, yung kanilang mga Tagalog eh, uh, slang na. Hindi na yung uh, uh, hindi na sila makapagsilita ng tuwid na Tagalog. No? So, what we can see is like Paul was like that. Uh, uh, but then, ang sabi niya, I am not actually like those people who were born outside who have adopted the Greek culture. Ang sabi po niya sa Philippians chapter 3, I am a Hebrew of Hebrews. I am a Hebrew of Hebrews. Ang ibig sabihin po nun, bagamat siya ay pinanganak sa labas ng Israel, but his parents raised him up in the culture of the Jews. No, Hindi po siya ni-raise sa culture ng mga Greeks, kundi ni-raise po siya sa culture ng mga Jews. And, and so, mahal na mahal niya po yung kultura ng Hudyo, and at the same time, he decided to become a Pharisee. Kaya nga po ang sabi doon, he was educated under Gamaliel. And ano po, sino po si Gamaliel? Gamaliel was one of the famous popular Pharisee during their time. No? Because he was a great teacher of the law. Yung po yung kanyang, ano, kanyang description sa kanya. Na pag, pag uh, pinipresent niya po yung law, the law has become beautiful. Dahil sa kanyang pagpipresent. So think of a, a famous preacher in our country. Uh, I think of Pastor Peter. Pastor Peter is one of our uh, popular preachers and, and great preachers here in the Philippines. Just think that Gamaliel has the same reputation as Pastor Peter, or Pastor Peter has the same reputation as Gamaliel. No, Known to be a great teacher of the Bible or the great teacher of the law. And dun po, yun po yung nag-disciple ke Paul a great teacher. And not only that, he is under a great teacher, but he was very zealous uh, for God and he was very legalistic. No? Alam niyo po yung kanilang pagiging legalistic? Uh, yung mga Pharisee po, ganito po. No? Halimbawa po, let me give you an example. Kung sinabi ni God, kasalanan ang pumasok dito sa sanctuary na to, no? Kung kasalanan pumasok dito, ang sasabihin sa inyo ng mga Pharisees, huwag kang papasok sa Berkeley Square. Ang inuutos lang ng Diyos, huwag kang papasok dito sa sanctuary ito, ang iuutos sa inyo ng Pharisee, huwag kang papasok sa Berkeley Square. Bakit? Ibig sabihin, ini-expand nila yung law para hindi mo ma-violate, ma-violate yung law. Ganun po kaligalistic ang mga Pharisees. Ganun din po kaligalistic si Paul. And that's why when... when uh, when Stephen was saying, it's not because of the law that you are saved, it is because of the Lord Jesus Christ, kaya galit na galit po si Paul sa mga uh, Christians. No? And, and, um, and in 26.9 it says, So then, I thought to myself that I had to do many things hostile to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and as I punish them often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme and being fiercely engaged uh, in rage at them. I kept pursuing them even to foreign cities. You can see Paul's determination to persecute Christians. And so now my question to you is this. How can a persecutor of Christians become a Christian? Right? How can a persecutor of Christians become a Christian? Paul was an unlikely candidate to become a Christian. But because of the sovereign grace of God, Paul or Saul was transformed. 
And we will see in Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to 31, the transformation of, of Saul. And this is what we will see. We will see that as we experience God's transformation, these are the principles that we will see in this passage. First is in God, in His sovereign grace, God transforms. Alam niyo po, binabago po tayo ng Diyos dahil sa kanyang biyaya at dahil sa kanyang kapangyarihan. Next is in His sovereign grace, God uses others for our transformation. Gumagamit po ang Diyos ng ibang tao para tayo po ay lumago. And in His sovereign grace, God calls us to be agents of transformation. Hindi lamang po gusto ng Diyos na tayo lumago, kundi tayo rin po ay magamit para sa uh, paglago ng ibang mga tao. And so, let's look at the first principle. In His sovereign grace, God transforms. No, God transforms. Now, we will see in verse 3 to 4, it says, As he was traveling, talking about Saul, it happened that he was approaching Damascus. And suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And so we can see here that Jesus... No, appeared to Paul. So there was a, a bright light that, that was there shining in front of Paul. Now let me ask you, how bright was the light? Gano po kaliwanag yung light na yon? No, in, in his testimony in chapter 22, he said, But it happened that as I was on the way approaching Damascus about noontime, a very bright light suddenly flashed from heaven all around me. So, kailan po nangyari yung bright light? Noontime, no? Now, let me ask you, how bright is the light at noontime? Okay? Very bright. <laughs> Hindi ba? Uh, the sun, ano, when it's noontime, the sun is the brightest pag tanghali. Miski anong bukas mo ng flashlight, hindi mo makikita yung ilaw ng flashlight because of the brightness of the sun. And just think about it. Ang sabi dito, okay, a very bright light suddenly flashed from heaven all around me, which means the light that shone overwhelmed the light of the sun. It was brighter than the sun. No, kaya nga po, si, si Paul knew that this was not an ordinary light. It was the light of God. In the Old Testament, ang tawag po ay Shekinah glory. And so Paul realized that this is not an ordinary light, but this is of God revealing Himself to him. No? And then look at the message. Look at the voice that he heard. Ang sabi sa kanya, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? And so what Jesus was communicating to Paul is this. When you persecute Christians, you persecute me. Your per persecution of my children is a persecution against me. And I don't know with you, but for me that was, this is an encouragement. Because I know that when I am persecuted, heaven feels it. When you are persecuted, heaven feels it. When you are hurt, heaven feels the hurt. Jesus feels the hurt. So God feels the pain when we are in pain. No? So when we are persecuted, it is persecuting God. Now let me ask you, what are some form of persecution that you experience? Ano yung mga persecution na, na nararanasan ninyo? It might not be the same as before, as in the Bible that they were captured and put in prison. Maaring hindi ganon, but I believe that there are some form of persecution that, we, that happened to us. Let me just ask you uh, or, or give you some examples of maybe a form of persecution dito sa atin sa Pilipinas. How about a ridicule, a ridicule from your family members? Relatives and friends. So ngayon, tinututya na kayo, tinutukso kayo. Oh, yun, no? Born again na yun, pataas-taas lang ng kamay. Di ba? So tinutukso-tukso ka na. Or how many of you have uh, been disinvited <laughs> dahil kayo ay Christian? Wag mo na imbitahin si Eric kasi Christian na yan. You know? 
So, okay, yeah, how about discrimination? You are discriminated because of your faith. No? Or you have, um, uh, yung tinatawag na, but you are bypassed in a promotion. No? Sabi nyo, oh, wag natin promote yan kasi Christian yan, hindi niya kaya magsinungaling. No? And so, those are some form of persecution. But then, the encouragement here is this. When people persecute you, they are persecuting Jesus. And when you feel the pain, Jesus feels the pain. No? And, and this is what, what Jesus was telling Paul. Uh, and, and so, that's why he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But he uh, but get up and enter the city, and it will be told you what you must do. And look at how Paul addressed Jesus. He said, Who are you, Lord? Now, hindi po ito polite na statement, like saying, Who are you, sir? Kasi yung, yung word na Lord can be translated as sir. But I believe that the word Lord is telling, Who are you, master? Because the light that that he saw was not an ordinary light. He knew that it was God. That's why he asked, Who are you, Lord? And so the question is, did, did Paul or Saul become a Christian at this point in time? Did he believe Jesus at this very moment? And we will see signs that Paul was converted at this time. So makita po natin yung mga signs. The first is in his testimony, again, going back to chapter 22, 10, he said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Get up and go on into Damascus, and there you will be told of all that has been appointed for you to do. He said, From being, Who are you, Lord? And sabe, What shall I do, Lord? And so what we can see here is a sign of conversion that Paul is now willing to surrender his life. He was willing to surrender his will to the Lordship of Jesus. That's sabi niya, what shall I do, Lord? No, Paul knew that he was going on a, uh, the wrong direction and now he is submitting to the will of God. And so the point here is this. We cannot say that we are Christians if we are not surrendering to the will of God for our lives. Because Christians surrender to the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. But at the same time, here's the picture that I want you to see. Paul was not pursuing God. Paul was not seeking God. No? But what's happening here was this. God was pursuing him. Just think about it. Paul was pursuing the belief. The, the believers to persecute them, but God was pursuing him to save him because God loves him. God loves him. The persecutor of the church, still God loves him. God has pursued you and me. That's why we are here. Do you believe that? Even if you say that you were the one who sought to be in a Bible study, you sought to be in a D group. You were the ones who attended church because you are seeking God. But the reality is from the very beginning, Jesus, God, was seeking you, was pursuing you because God loves you. And I believe that up to now, He's pursuing us. He's pursuing us so that we will love Him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because God knows that when we love Him, it is us who will be benefited from, from loving Him. Tayo po yung makikinabang pag tayo po ay nagmamahal sa Diyos. And God pursues you because God loves you. Pakisabi po sa katabi, God loves you. I don't know with you, do you, what's the, what's the significance and the implication of that statement to you? God loves you. No? And sometimes nakakalimutan po natin na mahal tayo ng Diyos. Nakakalimutan natin na mahal tayo ng Diyos. Pag nalimutan natin na mahal, na, na mahal tayo ng Diyos, we will look for love in other things. And that's why that is a very important statement and we should not never forget that God loves us. 
And then in, in uh, 1 Timothy, makita po natin yung description po ni Paul sa kanyang conversion. Ang sabi niya, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because He considered me faithful, putting me into service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor. Now, would you like to describe yourself that way? Would you like to describe your, uh, yung sarili nyo in a negative way? Si Paul was saying, I am a blasphemer, I am a persecutor, I am a violent aggressor. And you know why Paul was able to describe him that way? Because he knew that he was transformed. He knew that that was his old life and now that he is renewed. It says, yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. Paul realized that though he was seeking God through the, through obedience, uh, uh, through the obedience of the law, nakalaman niya, na, sabi niya, that it is by the grace of God. Ano ba sabi nun? It is not through his own merit that God saved him. It is because of the love of God. Ganun din po sa atin. Okay? There is nothing in us that would make us worthy of salvation. The salvation that God has given us was a gift. Binigay po ito sa atin na regalo na ang kailangan lang po natin gawin ay tanggapin. And uh, look at how Paul saw himself. Ang sabi niya, For I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man, but I see a different law in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is in my members. So nakita po niya na though he wants to obey the law, but there is sin in him that is manifesting. Kaya nga sabi nga po niya, I, I want to do what I do not want to do. And the, and the things I do, I do not do because of the sin in me. Kaya nga po ang sabi niya, what a wretched man I am who will set me free from the body of this death. No? Nakita po niya that he's wretched. And you know what? Without the grace of God, all of us are wretched. Wretched in the eyes of God. But still God delivered us. And then Paul continued on and said, It is a trustworthy statement, deserving full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners among whom I am foremost of all. Sabi dito, Jesus came to save sinners, even worst sinners. And here's the point. There is no sinner that Jesus cannot forgive. There is no sinner that Jesus cannot forgive. Think about those people that you think of who are, you think, unlikely to become Christians. Those are sinners that God wants to forgive. And then, continued on, said, Yet for this reason I found mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might demonstrate His perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in Him for eternal life. And so Paul was um, an example of God's patience, which means God was patient in saving Paul, in transforming Paul. No? So think of the people that, you, that you've been praying for to be saved. Think of them. No? Don't give up on praying for them because Jesus is patiently drawing them to Himself. No? So don't give up on them. Keep on praying. Alam niyo po, uh, <clears throat> I became a Christian in 1982. So wag na po kayo magbilang. No? I received Christ when I was still on the womb. So, uh, I started praying for my dad to become a Christian right after becoming a Christian in 1982. And there was a time na I was praying for him and there was this period na parang I gave up. Parang sabi ko, Lord, parang sayang lang yung panalangin ko. So I, there was a period that I, I, I wasn't praying for my dad anymore. No? Kasi yung dad ko sabi nga, Eric, ba't ako magiging Christian? Eh, mas maganda yung buhay ko doon sa mga, Christian, mga Christianong kapitbahay natin. 
No? And, and so, but the Lord reminded me, just keep on praying. And my, my dad received the Lord Jesus in 2007. So 1982, I started praying for my dad. At tumanggap yung daddy ko in 2007. He received Jesus a few weeks before he died. Before he died. No? And so, don't give up praying for the people whom you want to be saved. Because God is patient with them. Ang sabi nga po, ni, ni, again ni Paul, ke Timothy, This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And then we continue in a story, so, um, with a story, and it says there, the men who traveled with him stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. And leading him by the hand, they brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither ate nor drunk. You know what Paul was doing? He was actually praying. Praying and fasting. And Sabi puts in verse 11, Paul wa, or Saul was praying. He was praying and fasting. Now this is a, again a sign of Paul's conversion. Before he was proud. He was angry. He was trying to persecute Christians. But now God broke him. He was humbled. And now he was dependent on God. He was praying and fasting. A sign of transformation. And so in His sovereign, his sovereign grace, God transforms. God transforms. And the people that you are praying for, God has the power to change their lives. And so the second principle that I want to share with you is this. In His sovereign grace, God uses others for our transformation. God uses others for our transformation. God called a person. To minister to Paul. And this person was Ananias. Ang sabi dito, Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to this, the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. And he, wa he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. And so, ano po instruction kay Ananias? Go to Saul, whom he knows to be what? A persecutor of the church. Now, if you were Ananias, what would you do? No? How would you respond? What would you feel? No? Kung kayo si Ananias... Uh, if you were in Ananias' shoes, knowing that you will be persecuted, you would probably say, Lord, can you just send someone else? Iba? You know, kung alam niyo po yung may, merong kanta before, pl Lord, uh, please don't send me to Africa. Kung alam niyo yun, kasi tanda ko kayo. Uh, <laughs> it's an old song, but uh, that song basically saying is that we, we fear of going to Africa as a missionary because we fear that we will lose our lives, that we will be persecuted. And that's why probably we can say, Lord, send someone else. No? But you know what? Even if Ananias said, Lord, can you please send someone else? The Lord can say, sorry, sinabi ko na yung pangalan mo. No? Because uh, Saul saw in a vision the name Ananias. So, wala nang kawala si Ananias. He needed to go. But then, you can see what Ananias did. Ananias expressed his concern to the Lord. And by the way, it's not wrong to express our concerns to the Lord. No? Ang sabi dito, but Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he did to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on the name, uh, on your name. And so, ang sabi po ni Ananias, Lord, kilala ko tong taong ito. And I, I, I knew the damage no, that he created, uh, that he did in, in, uh, in the church. And so, Ananias expresses concern. And, and it's okay. God 
allows us to express our concerns. Because when we, when we express our concerns, God would speak to us. God would answer um, our, our concerns or even our prayers. No? <clears throat> you know, just a few weeks ago, I need to make a decision uh, because um, uh, a new task is being given to me. And, uh, and for me, it is uh, a difficult task because one, I don't like it. <laughs> and second, um, uh, I, I know that I will be uh, going against some people and uh, there, that there might be conflict. Uh, and, I, I, and I know that there's a lot of um, stress that comes along with the task. And so... Um, I, I see Michelle ang sabi niya sa akin, so why, why, why don't you, you pray? And then would ask me, uh, so ano nang sagot ni God sa iyo? And so I was praying, I was expressing my concerns to the Lord. Ito yung mga ine-express ko sa kanya. And you know, God's revelation to me was this, one word. One word, sabi niya, submit. <laughs> Yun lamang. And, and so I, I did uh, a few, uh, just uh, I, I think a week ago, I decided to accept the task because I know if God wants me to do it, He will help me to do it. And so, Ananias, though he expressed his concern, the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentile and kings and the sons of Israel, for I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. Look at what it says here. Go, because you know what? The person that you will help, he is my instrument. You know, in encourage uh, ni, ni God si Ananias. Sabi niya, yeah, you, you perceive him as a persecutor, but don't worry. He will be my instrument. Instrument of what? Ang sabi niya doon, he will be my missionary to the Gentiles. And he will be preaching the gospel to kings, to, to influential leaders, and to the people of Israel. No? And uh, he also revealed how the Lord, no? or how, what Paul will experience as he followed the Lord. Ang sabi po doon, uh, I will show him how much he must suffer for na- my name's sake. No? So pinakita na rin po na that 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 Saul will suffer. And so what we can see here is that the Damascus experience of Paul was not only his conversion, but his calling as well. Hindi lamang po siya tinransform, siya rin po ay tinawag. Although Paul knew his calling later on, no? But his conversion is at the same time his calling because God knew, no? When God transforms people, God knew already His calling for them. You know, I believe in this, that before I received Jesus as my personal Savior and Lord, God knew that I will be a teacher. Before Pastor Alex received Jesus into his life, God knew that from being a doctor, he will become a missionary and a pastor. God knew that Brother Lito, before receiving Christ, will become the OIC of CCF Commonwealth. Will become the, C- the OIC of CCF Commonwealth. God knows that even before you receive Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, He has a calling for you. He has a task that God wants you to fulfill. And so Ananias departed and entered the house, and after laying his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on on the road by which you were coming has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so, look at this. Pumunta si si Ananias, and how did Ananias call Saul? Saul brother. And so God already revealed to Ananias that Saul was a 
Christian, a believer. And by the way, that's a sign of a believer. A believer is someone who belongs to the family of God. No? Kung, kung, meron, kung meron pong kasabihan, no man is an island, ganun din po ang kasabihan, no Christian is an island. Because when God saved us, He made us belong to His family. Okay? And another um, proof that He's a Christian is this, that He was filled with the Holy Spirit. No? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, let me ask you, how will people know that you are filled with the Holy Spirit? How will people know that you are filled with the Holy Spirit? Through the fruit of the Holy Spirit. No? And, and so, and we can see here, and immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he regained his sight, and he got up and was baptized, and he took food and was strengthened. And so makita po natin that God used Ananias, and later on, that God will use Barnabas to, to help Paul, to minister to Paul, to help Paul in his transformation. And so in his sovereign grace, God uses others for our transformation. No? You know, in my life, God used people. No? When I became a Christian, God used a person. He used this person probably three or four months long in my life. But I see his contribution in my life as very significant. No? Kasi po, nung naging Christian ako, uh, finalo up niya ako, dinisciple niya ako for four months, and then he had to leave for the United States. And recently, nakita po kami. Huli po kami nakita no 1982, nakita po kami 2019. I just saw him. No? And the person who... Uh, help me in my in my spiritual growth uh, is the brother of Pastor Bong Saking. Uh, before Pastor Bong was known to be the brother of Rene Saking, <laughs> kasi si Rene who discipled me is uh, known to, uh, in UP as the, one of the professor, one of the Christian professors in UP. Uh, and now Pastor Rene is co- is known to be the brother of Bong. But you know what? God used Kuya Rene. I call him Kuya Rene in my life, even just four months, no? Because he left me in the church uh, and he, kumbaga, uh, ipinagkatiwala ako doon sa isang church so that I'll continue to grow. But you know what? God continued to use people in my growth. And that's my story. Uh, God used people in my growth. My Christian life uh, was not consistent. No, nung tinanggap ko po si Kristo, five years po akong bum- bumalik sa kasalanan. Ibig sabihin, I lived a carnal life. Though I was in a church, I was carnal. But there's this couple who did not give up on me, who kept on loving me and reminding me of the love of Christ. And then there's a friend that God used, a missionary. She shared with me the ministry of the Holy Spirit. No? And that's why I grew in my faith because of her contribution. And up to now, no? up to now, I have mentors helping me in my growth. And so the question I have for you is this. Is there someone helping you to grow? Okay, That's the first question. Second question is, is there someone that you're helping to grow? Two questions. One is, is there someone helping you, helping you to grow? Second, is there someone that you are helping to grow? Because in His sovereign grace, God uses others for our transformation. And the last principle is this. In His sovereign grace, God calls us to be agents of transformation. No, And when God transforms us, he calls us to be His witness. Ito po yung sinabi sa Acts 1.8. It says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. So we are called to be His witness. 
Lahat po tayo, nung atin po tinanggap ang ating Panang Heso Kristo, tayo po ay tinawag para magpatutuo. Okay? We are called to be His witness. And Paul knew that, and that's why, look at what it says here. Now, for several days, he was with the disciples who were at Damascus, and immediately, he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And so, after conversion, Paul knew that he now has a new direction. Now, I want you to think about this. Paul, a persecutor turned preacher. You know, magandang headline yan. A persecutor turned preacher. And he has one message to tell, that Jesus is the Son of God. And by the way, that is all we need to proclaim. All we need to proclaim is Jesus. We don't need to proclaim our church. We don't need to proclaim religion. All we need to proclaim is Jesus. No? And that was what Paul was doing. And we have been given a new mission, a calling, a purpose. And that is Matthew 28, 18 to 20. It says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it says there also that when He empowers us, He empowers to be His witness. Acts 1, 8. And because of His preaching, it says, all those hearing Him continued to be amazed and were saying, is this not He who in Jerusalem destroyed those who called on His name, on this name? Uh, and who had come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priest. So what's happening here? People recognized that Paul no, or Saul, a persecutor, now preacher. This is the power of change life, or change lives. No? Uh, and this is the power of God. You know that our own transformation is the gospel of Christ to those who see our lives. Our own transformation is the gospel of Christ to those who see our lives. Pag nakikita po ng mga tao ang pagkilos ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay, yan po yung good news. Yan po yung good news. And it is a powerful testimony. It is a powerful message. And that's why we, we need to realize that the best agents of transformation are those who've experienced that transformation in their lives. And kayo po yun. Kayo po yun. And so you are God's agents of transformation. And then, continuing on, uh, it says uh, that Saul kept increasing in strength and confounding the Jews who lived at Damascus by proving that this Jesus is the Christ. And so we can see that Saul continued to grow in his knowledge and in his conviction. And as a result, he kept on preaching the gospel. And by the way, if God, if you want to be used by God, you need to keep on growing in Him growing in your knowledge and growing in your conviction. If we stop growing, then we will not be able to be used by God in His service. But then, as Paul was continuing on preaching the gospel, meron po nangyari, the Jews plotted together to do away with Him. Ano ibig sabihin? Gusto siyang patayin. No? Now, Paul moved from becoming a persecutor to become persecuted. Right? So he moved from persecutor to preacher, from persecutor to persecuted. Okay? But you know what? Paul would have not been persecuted if he just stayed silent. Diba? He just stayed silent. Kung hindi siya nagsalita, kung hindi siya nagpreach, probably people will just ignore him. And sometimes that's what we do. No? Because of our fear of being rejected, our fear of uh, being persecuted, we just keep silent. 
we don't even tell people that we are Christians, no? Because of our fear. But you know what? Paul was not like that. Because he knew his calling. He was zealous in persecuting the, the, uh, the Christians, but now he is zealous in preaching the gospel. Paul knew his calling, and no one can stop him from preaching the gospel. Now, this statement by, uh, by Barclay is very interesting. It says, no one persecutes a man who is ineffective and who obviously does not matter. <laughs> ibig sabihin, pag hindi ka persecute, ibig sabihin, wala kang ginagawa. You are not making an impact. The point that, the, the very fact that Paul was being persecuted was because he was making an impact. The reason why the Christians were being persecuted was because they were making an impact. If we are not making an impact, pababayaan lang tayo ng kaaway. No? Wala ka namang ginagawa eh. So, hayaan ka lang. And then, Barclay continued and said, to suffer persecution is to be paid the greatest of compliments because it is the certain it is the certain proof that men think we really matter. No? Ibig sabihin, take it as a compliment pag pinersecute ka. Kasi ibig sabihin, meron kang ginagawa. At ikaw ay napapansin. And so when people persecute us, because they are seeing us. No? We are being noticed. And I hope that we are being noticed because we proclaim the gospel of Christ. And Paul's confidence, which means no one can stop him from preaching, is because of this. It says, I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So Paul's confidence was in the power of the gospel. Bakit? Kasi na-experience niya po yung transformation. You will be confident in the message of God if you have experienced the power of the message of God. And Paul would always go back to his conversion, to his conversion testimony, whenever he will be questioned regarding his ministry. And it seems that Paul was saying, the reason why I do what I do is because God saved me. The reason, uh, the reason why I do what I do is because God saved me. And so your service and dedication to God is a result of your knowledge of how much God has done for you. Until we realize how much God done. Uh, how much God uh, sacrificed for us, we will not be able to serve Him. And that's why we need to know what God did for us. But then, when He came to Jerusalem, He was trying to associate with the disciples, but they were all afraid of Him, not believing that He was a disciple. No, natatakot po yung mga disciples sa church. And I would, I would not blame them. Why? Because he put a lot of, of Christians in prison. No, he could be a spy. And that, it happens even today. I know of 49 missionaries who were imprisoned for two years because they were infiltrated. He was a person of, gov of, of the government, infiltrated an organization, and uh, sabe that this organization was blaspheming their religion, and 49 of the missionaries were in prison. And so, the, the Christians uh, during that time no, could probably thinking that Paul was a spy, but look at this one person who took his chances with Paul. It says, but Barnabas took hold of him and brought him to the apostles and described to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had talked to him and how at Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. No? God used Barnabas 
to be an encouragement to Paul. No, because Barnabas was an agent of transformation. He's willing. No, he was willing to, uh, to take his chances with Paul. Um, you know, I remember Paul, when I was still in, um, before coming to CCF, I was in another church. And uh, wala po pa kami, wala kaming ministry of small group at that time. Uh, and uh, the preaching is, uh, the ministry was basically preaching and Bible study. And I was one of the, the preachers doon. And, uh, but the Lord impressed on me and said, Eric, disciple people, disciple men. Sabi niya, just two. Parang yung two. And so I looked around and I, I saw two and I challenged them. I challenged two people to be in a discipleship uh, relationship with me, a mentoring relationship. And those two agreed. But then, these two said, can we bring our friends? They want to join. And so they brought friends, and we end up eight in the group. Seven uh, decided to be in a mentoring relationship with me. And uh, we were in this uh, mentoring relationship, and uh, for some reason, that group nawalaren after a short period of time. Uh, but then the men, this is what they told me uh, when we, when, when, uh, when malapit na kaming magkahiwa-hiwalay, ang sabi nila sa akin, Eric, what we appreciate is this, tumaya ka sa amin. Ano ibig sabihin ng tumaya ka sa amin? Mahirap i-translate sa English. Uh, I, you gambled on us. Nagsugal ka sa amin. Well, hindi maganda eh, di ba? But I think basically what they're saying is, you took your chances on us. You took your chances on us. And they appreciate it so much. And then, you know what happened to the seven? Again, this is not me. This is by God's grace because these things happened after our group disbanded. One of them became a pastor, one a counselor, one an elder, one a marketplace minister, and three small group leaders. All of the seven were used by God as agents of transformation. My question to you is this. Are you willing to be a Barnabas to others? Willing ka bang tumaya sa ibang tao? Are you willing to take chances on people? Even as, I was, even as I'm telling you this, God is revealing to me a person that He wants me to take a chance on. He is revealing to me. And, uh, and so I'll be praying for that. And so here what we can see is that uh, and he and Paul and Paul was with them, moving about freely in Jerusalem, speaking out boldly in the name of the Lord. And he was talking and arguing with the Hellenistic Jews, but they were attempting to put him to death. But when the brethren learned of it, he brought him down to Caesarea and sent him away to Tarsus. And we know that the rest is history. God used Paul tremendously in his missionary journeys. And so, this is my point. You would not know the impact that God can do through you when you obey your calling as an agent of transformation. You would not know the impact that God can do through you when you obey your calling as an agent of transformation. Again, in His sovereign grace, God calls us to be agents of transformation. And what a way to be an agent of transformation and be in a team, in a team that is victorious. Because look at what it says, and I will end here. It says, so the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria enjoyed peace, being built up and going on in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit and continued to increase. The church continued to grow. And so when we join God's team, we join a winning team because nothing and no one can stop God from expanding His kingdom. People experience transformation through God's sovereign grace. We experience God's transformation. Can you repeat that again? Experience God's transformation. Let's, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for us. 
And thank you, Lord, for calling us to be part of your family. Thank you, Lord, for the work of transformation. And thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to be, to be used by you as an instrument. But Lord, I know that there are some people here who probably have not encountered you, Jesus, in a personal way. They know you in their heads. They know that you are the Son of God, but they've not made a decision yet to receive you into their lives, to surrender their lives to you. And so, Lord, I pray that you will speak to them right now. I pray that as the bright light that shone in, in Paul will be the very light that is shining in the hearts of those people right now. And I pray that they will make a decision, just like Paul, to believe and to surrender their lives to you. Now, if you are that person that you want to surrender your life to Jesus and you want to receive Him as your personal Savior and Lord, I want you to raise your hands if that's your desire. Thank you. Thank you. I see that hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just keep those hands raised. And please pray with me. You can pray with me silently. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for the salvation that you have given. Thank you for the transformation that you have promised if we have Christ in our lives. I open the door of my heart right now. And I want to receive you, Jesus, as my Savior and my Lord. I surrender my life to you. I want you to be my king. I want you to be my master. And use me, Lord. Use me to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Can I ask you to please stand and let me just pray a prayer of blessing for all of you. Let's all stand and let me just pray. Lord, we are standing here thanking you, Lord, for the salvation that you have given. Lord, we thank you that you have made your presence and your power available for us so that we will experience you, so that we will continue to grow and be transformed. But at the same time, Lord, we thank you because through you, you can use us to be a blessing to others. And so, Lord, I pray that you will bless my brothers and my sisters here. Bless them with your presence. Bless them with your love. Bless them with your power. Lord, I pray that they will experience you in a mighty way and that they will experience you as they obey you to be agents of transformation. I pray that they will just see your work in their lives and in the lives of people. Thank you, Lord, for what you will do in the lives of my brothers and sisters. Thank you for the power that is in us. We love you, Jesus, and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.